So welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over how to compute individual federal income taxes. Let's get started. First, let us understand what income is and how the IRS classify and define income. First, there are different types of gross income. Uh, earned income are anything that you receive, so wages, commissions, fees, tips, bonuses, anything that is paid by an employer is considered earned income. And then there's investment income. Uh, this can be interest income from uh, your savings account, uh, dividend income from um, stocks or mutual funds, rent from a rental property, uh, or dividends from a business. So if you own a business, the, the business can pay dividends to you. Passive income are different from investment income. Passive income are from business that you do not manage. So you, uh, it can be a passive partnership. And then there is short-term capital gain and long-term capital gain. They are different tax rates. Uh, we will talk about capital gain a lot more when we talk about investment. Capital gain basically is a profit that you make from investing. And then there could be other types of income. This can include uh, winning from gambling, from a lottery, or prizes that you win in a competition. So all of these are considered income, and they're all subject to tax. There are exemptions and exclusion. These are things that will reduce your adjusted gross income. So tax income uh, tax exempt income is not subject to tax. A very common example is income on municipal bonds. Municipal bonds are bonds issued by various states. Um, and then, so these are tax exempt. Tax exempt means that they will never be taxed. And then another category of exclusion is tax deferred income. And this these are income that will be taxed at a later date. So they will be taxed, but just not today. Uh, any contribution to qualified retirement account, the most common examples are for 1K IRA contribution. Those are all tax defer, means that you don't pay tax this year, but when you retire, when you take the money out, then it will get taxed at that point in time. Your adjusted gross income is defined as your gross income minus all the exemptions and exclusions. So there are, uh, in addition to the common exclusion of tax exemption and tax deferment, there are also special situations. So if you fall into these special situations, uh, you, you will qualify for more exclusions. So these exclusions reduce your adjusted gross income. So it's very important. So you start with your gross income, and then you subtract any exemption and exclusion, which can include deferred income. And then you come up with your adjusted gross income. This is sometimes referred to as the AGI. And when you apply for loans, oftentimes they will want you to put down your AGI, your adjusted gross income. To determine how much income you have to pay tax on, we also have to look at deduction. Because the IRS will recognize that you need money to live on. So they do not tax your adjusted gross income, meaning your entire income. They make allowances for your living expenses. Those comes in the form of deductions. Standard deductions are set by the IRS is a fixed amount based on your filing status, disability, and your age. We'll go over that in just a minute. In addition to standard deduction, you can also itemize your deduction. So you can uh, determine exactly what your individual expenses are. Uh, itemized deduction takes a lot more paperwork. Uh, it is worthwhile if you are in a situation where you have a lot of tax deductible expenses. The most common uh, deduction items include donation, uh, or medical expenses. So if you have a lot of medical expenses or if you make a lot of charitable donation, then it may be worthwhile to take an itemized deduction. For most individuals, the standard deduction is sufficient. Other types of deduction include mortgage interest, 
uh, property tax, and also state and local income tax. The tax law does change quite a bit. The most recent tax law reduced um, the deduction amount that is allowed under mortgage interest, property tax, and local and, and state income tax. So it is less common for people to take itemized deduction under the current tax law. Uh, but it is an option that is available to uh, individual, if, especially if you are using a tax software. The software will oftentimes do both calculation for you and you can decide which one works better. Once you have determined your adjusted gross income and your deduction, then you can figure out your taxable income. So your taxable income is defined as your adjusted gross income minus the dedu deduction. So there are multiple steps. In fact, there are four main steps in computing taxes. The first is compute the adjusted gross income. The second is to look up or determine your deduction. And then you subtract deduction from adjusted gross income to come up with taxable income. Your taxable income is the amount of income that will be taxed. In the United States, the federal tax is considered a progressive tax system. What that means is that this, the incomes are divided into different tax brackets. And uh, you need to note that the tax bracket level changes every year. The most important idea here is that the higher income bracket will be taxed at a higher rate. So each t bracket is taxed at a different rate. And we'll go over a detailed example to show you how that works. But the bottom line is that um, not all income is taxed at the same rate. The more income you make, the higher the tax rate will be. So it's not just the amount of tax someone pays who earn a higher income, they actually pay a higher percentage as well. Uh, both the income bracket amount and the tax rate schedule uh, could change and the tax rate schedule uh, differ depending on your filing status. We're gonna talk about that in a minute, what filing status is. Uh, there, so but because we have different tax bracket, it's important to understand the difference between a marginal tax rate and an average tax rate. So the marginal tax rate refers to the tax rate that applies to the next dollar of income that you earn, or the taxable income. So not just income you earn, but the taxable income. So taxable income is adjusted gross income, AGI minus deduction. So marginal tax rate means uh, is which tax bracket you are in. which is different from the average tax rate. The average tax rate is computed as the tax that you actually pay, so the actual tax amount, divided by the taxable income. Most people's average tax rate is lower than their marginal tax rate, except for the very high earning individuals. We have mentioned filing status many times. Uh, so both your tax bracket and your deduction amount changes depending on your filing status. And the reason again is a concept of fairness. We want to be as fair as possible. So filing status is uh, includes single. So this is pretty straightforward. If you're a single individual living by yourself, um, it can be married individuals filing together. So filing jointly. It can be married individuals filing separately. So they are similar to a uh, single individual. And then there is head of household. Head of household can be an individual that have dependents. So single parent or even uh, an individual who is taking care of their parents. So the important thing is someone who is dependent on you. So as you can see, a head of household has more financial responsibility than a single individual. A special case is qualifying widow or widower with dependent child. So they have even more financial burden. So they have the, they are a uh, special status. So here's an example of tax bracket and tax rates based on different filing status. So you see that, for example, for a single filer, the first $11,000 they make will be taxed at 10%. 
but for married individuals filing jointly, up to twenty-two thousand dollars. So that makes sense. If your one person is eleven thousand dollars, jointly means two people. So eleven times two is twenty-two thousand. So their first twenty-two thousand dollars for two people would be taxed at ten percent. For head of household is fifteen thousand seven hundred dollars. So the single filer, uh, they assume that they have more financial burden. So up to fifteen thousand seven hundred dollars for heads of household will be taxed at ten percent. So notice that this is important. So uh, the first tax rate ten percent applies to. I'll use the individual as an example here. So up to eleven thousand dollars is taxed at ten percent. The next, so anything above eleven thousand dollars, so from eleven thousand to forty-four thousand seven hundred and twenty-five dollars, so that if you look at the difference, so the next thirty-three thousand seven hundred and twenty-five dollars, so forty-four seven twenty-five minus eleven thousand is thirty-three thousand seven twenty-five. The next thirty-three thousand seven twenty-five is taxed at twelve percent. So, if you make say fifty thousand dollars as an individual, as a single filer, you actually、uh, get taxed at different rate. So, let's say if you have fifty thousand dollars as your taxable income. So, again, this is not your AGI, but your taxable income.、Uh, so, the first eleven thousand dollars will be taxed at ten percent. The next thirty-three, so that's eleven thousand. The next thirty-three thousand. Seven hundred twenty-five dollars will be taxed at twelve percent, and then so that is not up to fifty thousand. You still have five thousand two hundred and twenty-five seventy-five dollars. So that five thousand two hundred and seventy-five dollars will be taxed at the twenty-two percent. So this individual's marginal tax rate is twenty-two percent, but his tax is not fifty thousand dollars times twenty-two percent. His tax is separated into this. Now the good news is that you don't have to do this calculation. We'll walk through how to do that in an example, but most of the time the tax software will do that for you. Now remember that、uh, in order to come to our taxable income, we need to know the standard deduction. So the standard deduction also depends on、uh, your filing status. So for individual filing, single individual is thirteen thousand eight hundred fifty dollars per person in twenty twenty three. If you're married filing jointly, again you multiply that by two is twenty seven thousand seven hundred for two for two people. Head of the household. Again, is a higher standard de deduction at twenty thousand eight hundred, primarily because, as head of household, you have more expenses, so you get a higher standard deduction. It is important to note that the standard de deduction amount is also different if you are older, or if you are blind. So, if you meet those sp、uh, special cases, your st standard deduction amount will be higher. So again,、uh, uh, look up the actual amount every single tax year. Okay, let's apply all the concept that we have just learned to a specific example. So let's say we have an individual that is a single filing status, and they make sixty-two thousand dollars in salary, three thousand dollars in interest and dividend, and they receive two thousand dollars in in gifts. The first step we're gonna do is to compute adjusted gross income. So remember what is included in adjusted gross income and what is not. So any earned income, so sixty-two thousand dollars is an, an earned income that is included. The three thousand dollars in interest and in dividend is also included, but the gift tax is not included because if there's any tax, that will be paid by The donor, meaning the person who is giving the gift, not the receiver.、Uh, furthermore, the exclusion amount is higher than two thousand dollars, so that would not be subject to、uh, tax. So, therefore, your adjusted gross income is the sixty-two thousand dollars plus the three thousand dollars, and that's sixty-five thousand dollars. So, the two thousand dollars in gift is not part of it. Once we know the adjusted gross income, we have to look up the standard deduction. 
This is an individual filing single. So the standard deduction according to the table we have is $13,850. So we can compute the taxable income. Taxable income is adjusted gross income minus the standard deduction. So we have $65,000 is the adjusted gross income. Subtracting the deduction of $13,850, you have taxable income of $51,150. Now we have to use the federal income tax table. Remember the tax table that we saw earlier? So we know that the first $11,000 is taxed at 10%. The next $33,725 is taxed at 12%. And then anything up to $95,000 is taxed at 22%. So we have to separate them into three brackets. So here are the three brackets. The first $11,000 at 10%, so that's 0.1. And then the next which is the 33725 So we subtract 11000 because we already paid 10% on the $11,000. We don't pay that again. And that's at 12%. And then finally, 51000 minus 44725 The reason we subtract that is because we already paid tax on the first $44,725. 11000 is at 10%. The next 33 3725 at 12%, and then the remaining is at 22%. So this is the amount that you owe in federal tax. So you owe $6,561 in federal tax. Whether or not you get a refund or you have to pay additional tax depends on the withholding. If the amount of tax that has been withheld for the year is less than $6,561, you have to pay the difference. If the amount of withholding is greater than $6,561, you'll get a refund for the overpayment. So in this individual, because the last tax bracket is 22%, their marginal tax rate is 22%. And the average tax rate, remember that's tax divided by the taxable income. So the tax is $6,561. That's what we computed. Your taxable income is $51,150. So the marginal, uh, the average tax rate is 12.83%. So even though your marginal tax rate is 22%, you do not pay 22% on the entire $51,150. You pay different tax rate for this, each bracket. So on average, you pay 12.83% on the $51,150. Before you pay tax, you should also determine whether or not you qualify for any tax credit. Tax credit reduces the amount of tax that you have to pay. Usually tax credits have income limits and they are intended for people who have uh, low income. And it's important to pay attention because some tax credits can give you a refund even if you don't owe any tax at all. So uh, examples include child tax credit or earned income tax credit. Tax credits are very different from deduction. Tax credits reduce the amount of tax that you owe, whereas deduction reduce your taxable income. And a tax credit, uh, also again, if you don't, even if you don't owe any tax, you can still qualify for a refund under some uh, tax credits. So let's take a look at our example that we saw. If when you have a marginal tax rate of twenty-two percent. A thousand dollar tax credit will reduce your tax by a thousand dollars because that's just a simple tax credit. Whereas a deduction will reduce your taxable income by a thousand dollars, but you pay twenty two percent on your taxable income. So a deduction will only reduce your tax liability by two hundred and twenty dollars, whereas a tax credit will reduce your tax liability by a thousand dollars. Now that you know how to compute your taxes, what do you do? Uh, most people will need to file a federal income tax return by the due date, which is uh, April 15th. 
If you are not able to file your tax on time, you can use an extension. Uh, however, an extension does not reduce your requirement to pay. So you have to do what we call an estimated payment. So you just you don't have to do the detailed calculation. You just estimate how much you may owe. So this can be an estimation, just round it to a certain amount. Uh, you have to pick that estimation. Otherwise, you can still be subject to a penalty. So well, what will happen if you make a mistake? That's the really good news. Don't worry. Tax is not that complicated and it's not that scary. If you make a mistake, you can also file an amendment. The amendment is called Form 1040X and you can fix your mistake. If you don't pay enough, you can get, you can pay the difference. If you actually make a mistake and you pay too much, you can file the amendment, the 1040X and get a refund. So that's the good news. Taxes are an important part of financial planning. Uh, the first thing that you may want to determine is how much tax to withhold. Rem tax withholding is the amount that usually get deducted from our paycheck. So those are the withholding. The withholding is not how much you owe. This is just how much we prepay. This is our estimate to the IRS. You can actually go to the IRS website and you can use the withholding to determine how much your income tax may be. And you don't want to withhold too much, but you definitely don't want to under withhold either because that can result in a penalty. Another thing that you want to take into account when you're doing financial planning is to take advantage of tax savings. And uh, for example, college costs can be qualified as deduction. Um, if you have a home, your property tax is a deduction. Uh, other important financial planning tools uh, include def uh, tax deferral investment. So retirement accounts, uh, health savings accounts, uh, tax defer so which means that you don't pay tax today you pay tax when you take the money out in the future there are other investment that are tax exempt in this case uh, particularly Roth IRA uh, or uh, 529 plan which is for savings the contributions are not tax defer are not tax exempt however the income on the investment are tax exempt and that can be really beneficial because uh, you don't have to worry about paying tax when you take money out of a Roth IRA because you already pay tax when you make the contribution and all the uh, income on these uh, vehicles are tax, ex tax exempt. So for tax deferred investment, such as 401k uh, or 403b, you, these are tax defer account, which means that they reduce your current income tax, but then when you take the money out, you have to pay tax. Tax exempt investments, such as Roth IRA, you don't get any tax benefit today, but you don't pay any tax on the return on the investment. So when you take money out of this account, you don't have to pay any tax. So tax can be a little bit complicated, but now you have learned a lot more and you can become a valuable resource, not just for yourself, but for your friends and family. We'll end this module here. I'll see you soon in our next module.